Well, hello, everybody. It is I, your friendly neighborhood survivor, buddy Gordon Holmes, here with your exit interview with the 10th eliminated con contestant, the third member of the jury, the ninth episode, a lot of numbers, but we're keeping track of them. That's what we do here. Uh, Kane. We're talking to Kane. Long story short. Too late. Uh, before we talk to him, a couple quick orders of business. First of all, the comment section is open, and we love to hear from you. We want to hear what you think about last night's episode, what you think about this interview. As always, the rule, sorry, Mike, are you got to be nice to each other, got to be nice to the contestants, and you got to be nice to me because I've had a rough week. We're going to turn it around, all of us, all of us together, going to turn it around, full 180. Uh, also, if you're interested in my episode recaps, along with my grades for each of the contestants, uh, that's at morewhatnot.com. That's my personal blog. Every Wednesday after the episode, they get posted there immediately. So the second the second they show you what happens next week on the episode, and then they, they, they hear that, that final uh, confessional, then you click on over there, you can see what I thought about it, if you care. Who cares? I care. You should care. Care. Uh, also, that was very aggressive. I apologize. Also, the Survivor Power Rankings are back, and Owen Knight is really giving it to me. But we have tied in back-to-back -back weeks. We had the same. We both had Kane in spot six last night. It's really fun, really nerdy. Uh, great insight from 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 Owen. Uh, okay insight from me. Uh, check it out every Monday. We post a new one on this YouTube channel you're on right now. Uh, and finally, uh, like the like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, does us a huge favor, uh, helps more people see us, it helps us figure out that algorithm, and the more people see us, the more stuff we can do. And I got some plans for the summer, so let's uh, let's let's try to survive our plans for you, not just like I'm not going just to the beach. I am going to the beach, I'm not just going to the beach. Uh, but yeah, all those things help get to a, hu a huge favor, and I super appreciate it. Uh, but with that being said, let's see what Kane has to say about last night's episode. Oh, Kane. Uh, I tell you, man, this show is ugly. It's an awful, ter like people lie on their badges, on their fa like their family. I don't know if you know this. Some dude said that his grandmother had passed away uh, and she hadn't, but lie about scouts on her. Yeah, no, I know. That's the thing. And, and I didn't know that you could lie in the game. So right, that was, really? yeah, that put me, I was like, what, why is this happening? So that put me at a huge disadvantage. And yeah, I mean, to lie about Scott's honor is it's it's up there. It's up there is all I'll say. Given a second chance, um, do you think you would lie now that you know that you're allowed to? <laughs> yeah, if someone would have told me that initially, I think that I probably would have lied. Again, not to that level of atrocity, right? But uh, you know, I don't I don't blame the people who were working with the information they had to get old Kane Fritzler off the show. So it happens, you know. It happens, but if you get a second chance, my 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 advice and i've been i've been watching the show for quite some time maybe lie a little bit just, just bend okay, the truth yeah. let's not go crazy maybe bend the truth a little bit yeah 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 bend the truth bend the truth i like that yeah so, so when you showed up at uh the immunity challenge it, it seemed like an, an agreement had been come to that nobody was going to sit out is that is that accurate i think that the agreement was that no one was going to sit out without seeing the challenge i think that heidi kind of pushed for that and no one was going to blindly give away their shot at immunity um, but I don't think people completely said no. There were players that did, like Franny and Danny and Jam were going to participate no matter what. But I think that some of us, other stock, were were willing to be persuaded. Um, so it wasn't a hard no, but we we were hesitant. When you saw it was a stand here awkwardly and hold this thing, was, was that you're like, okay, I'm good. I, I like rice. Yeah. Yeah, no, with when I saw like what I was supposed to stand on one foot and balance myself, I was like, yeah, this is, this is not my rodeo. I'm going to just I'm going to try and do something else here. And it seemed like Tika is weirdly like a swing tribe. Like it seemed like they were kind of playing both sides. It seemed like Franny had figured that out at that point in the game. Uh, did you think Tika was completely on your side? No, not at all. Um, we, you know, I was part of those conversations, too, with uh, Franny, like uh, we had talked, and from my perspective, Soka was pointed at Tika on the understanding that they were playing in the middle. Um, but at that time, it was still making sense for me to continue the relationship with Tika, mostly because Carson and Jam had voted with us against Franny. So from our perspective, we still had them. Carson was our kid from Rat 2. We still loved him very much. So we sort of had enough of it. It didn't seem quite to us that they were swinging as much as they were. Um, it seemed more that like we got disrupted in chaos the previous vote. So it was on my radar, but it wasn't something that I think I had to deal with right then. Mm -hmm. And what was the relationship like with Carson? You mentioned he had come over to your tribe. You had bonded over Pokemon and Lord of the Rings. So so how close were you with Carson? Yeah, no, it was more than just fantasy trigger words for sure. <laughs> we uh, I didn't I didn't hear Ghostbusters, Carson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
No, uh, Carson coming to the beach was was good for me. Um, it was somebody who I could finally really feel that I was talking the same language with. Like we talk strategy, we talk positioning, we talk players and boot orders. Like those were conversations we had. Um, and also just someone that I could relate to and was also just another young man who I could actually hang out with too, which was nice. So um, he was sort of an integral thing. And I also thought that the Tikas couldn't flip on me at that point because I thought Carson would tell me as he did with the Josh vote, he'd like just a few votes ago, he was my source of information for a vote coming away way. So I didn't think he would uh, turn on me that quickly. I did kind of, we had our pistols pointed at each other. Like I knew eventually Carson and I would have to, one of us would have to take out the other, but I did not think it was going to be that night. Based on when you left the game, uh, Carson, you know, obviously he's still in the throes of a peanut butter and jelly induced uh, coma. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he's a young guy. He's in good shape. He clearly uh, has skills with the puzzles, uh, thanks to his 3D printer. Uh, how wary were people of Carson at that point? People were wary of Carson, for sure. Honestly, at that, he was, like, basically sedated. I don't know what PBJ he had, because mine did not hit like that. But he was very out of it. Like, he was um, he was still very, like, sleepy and groggy and, and kind of out of it that day. And people were aware of what he was doing, but Carson at that time had also done something very well where he was, you know, he was part of other people's math, you know, like I wanted to strategize with him to try and get out Danny. Danny was working with Carson. Jam was working with Carson. So people were aware of it, but everyone was kind of trying to use Carson to get them to a point in the game where Carson, where, where then they would execute Carson. And that was my understanding anyways. And then he beat me to the punch for me. One of the twists they, they don't talk about is that one of the sandwiches was a PBA and J peanut butter ambient and jelly and i guess i guess carson hit it uh, yeah, yeah yeah no that one didn't make screen but yeah. they probably should have given us a heads up yeah uh carolyn is another one who you know she's she's i'm wacky so nobody's afraid of me uh, or, or, but she's also the one who steps up and is carson's partner in that challenge are people uh, concerned about her social game at this point again i think that Carolyn was somebody like she was on people's radars everyone kind of knew that she I mean she's a very emotional honest authentic person right and people were aware that that was Carolyn but also everyone also knew that she was playing out there like people were moving plays through her um and so yeah again she was on the radar but I think that she people were definitely not worried about her <laughs> uh, now you and you voted for Brandon in the very first vote and he never forgot about it uh which you know come on Let's move on. Yeah, uh, exactly. Were you were you aware of that? Were you comfortable working with Brandon, or or was he on your radar as well? Were you worried about him? Uh, the uh, so the part that he didn't show at all in Survivor was you know the repair work <laughs> that me and Brandon did. So we never got back up to like a hundred percent bro down, but we did repair our relationship. Like we had talks. Um, we knew that we could work together and that that would be beneficial to our games. Um, and then obviously with the Josh vote, he kind of threw me under the bus again, kind of dampered it. And so we sort of had a relationship where we knew that it was beneficial at that point to keep Ratu intact. But I know that we had our eyes on each other as well. Um, that like eventually I think that we would have gone for each other. And I think that was sort of the relationship we had where we would look at each other and we'd say, we get along. We're good for each other's game right now. But something might happen. Right. <laughs> you know, something, something might go down. So that was sort of the relationship we were able to carve out. But I definitely left when Brandon left the game. I can confidently say we were on good terms. Okay. Uh, we don't deal in spoilers here or, or anywhere, actually. Uh, but I do. So I don't want to know when you learned that the idol you left with was fake. I want to know just what your reaction to what to it was when you learned that that Jamie's idol was a phony. Um, utter disbelief, because like sometimes there's a sniff that idols are fake out there and there was nothing like there was so many rumors about jamie's idol and everybody thought it was real every single player left in the game thought that the idol was real and every person on the jury also thought it was real so when i finally learned that it was indeed fake first off it was a super huge relief because i was like oh sweet i didn't go home <laughs> with an idol in my sock that's like thank god because that would have sucked um but and did suck but uh but yeah then it was just like I was like, what is real anymore? Like, I, am I even in, like, an actual house right now? Like, my reality was completely tested again. When uh, when you were handed that idol, uh, and I know you didn't know you could lie in the game, but you could have kept the idol and done whatever you wanted with it. Uh, did that cross your mind? Like, what was your thought process when that was handed over? 
Yeah, I I work closely with Jamie, so I wasn't interested in like betraying her at that moment. But certainly, I had also sort of distilled this knowledge of power assumption into the game, hoping that things would find their way to me that I didn't find because I'd rather have the object. <laughs> because if if uh, if I go home with it in my pocket, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what happens now. I'm I'm gone. I'm not there anymore. But if Jamie goes home and I have her idol, now that becomes my idol. So that was the extent of my soiree into deceit was that um, I wanted the objects to be in my possession. And the way to do that was to scare people with knowledge of power. Okay. Uh, we do a word association here to get to know your tribe mates a little bit better. I'll give you someone's name. Give me the first word or a couple words that pop into your head. And I know it's very intimidating. And we'll start off with Jamie. Uh, bubbly. Maddie. Uh, fatalist. <laughs> jam jam. Eye contact. Carson. Nerd. Lauren. Uh, mother. Matthew. Uh, rock climber. Heidi. Uh, mm, that's an interesting one. Uh, I'm going to go with tiny but mighty. <laughs> uh, Brandon. Brother. Josh. Uh, no comment. <laughs> I just feel like I never got to know him. Okay. Uh, Franny. Um, Franny's like a sound effect. Like a... <laughs> uh, Carolyn. A more eccentric sound effect. Like, whoa! <laughs> uh, Matt. Um, meticulous. Uh, let's finish off with Danny. Uh, atomic bomb. I tell you... I'm I'm not opposed to doing instead of word association sound effect association based on what just happened here. I think you you gave me you're giving me ideas here. I appreciate that. Uh, jam jam is eye contact. What what does that mean? Yeah, when you uh the when you look into jam's eyes, you just like it's it's insane. Like he will, it's like a lie detector test, and he will just like look for your twitches. He will make sure you're telling him the truth. He will just like not break it at all, and he has just these big beautiful eyes too. So that's what I think of when I think of Jam. Do you think he's seeing your soul? Yeah, I think he's seeing just like everything. Like somehow I would leave and just be like, oh, now Jam knows my deepest, darkest secrets about myself somehow. Um, I'll be, I'll keep that in mind when I interview him. Um, if things had gone your way last night and Heidi goes home, what, what is your dream final three? What would you have been working toward? Well, my actual hope was that Danny would go home because mm. I thought that the Tikas were voting with me. Um, but my ideal final three would have been me, Lauren, and Jamie, because I think that, um, one, they were just like very good numbers for me. They would vote the way that I asked them to. We could, we had a good trusting relationship. Um, but also, I think just like at this point in the game, as I was tracking the season, like it made sense to try and get your tribe to the end. And I thought that at Final Trouble Council, I could really sort of punch up at the end and show that, you know, I was moving with intention that I was planning what I was planning. But I think that that would have been my ideal one. I just okay. didn't have a good enough read on the other people, you know? Okay. Um, you know, we only get to see, you know, 42 minutes or whatever of a, you know, two, three day period. Is there anything that happened out there that uh, didn't make the edit that you wish had? I think that uh, there's a lot of just like downtime and a lot of stuff where you just hang out. Like we had a whole arc on the beach of Ratu that no one saw because we were just always winning. But like, you know, me and Brandon would go out fishing like every single day and we would like sit around and tell stories. And I feel like I wish that that Ratu camp life kind of made it onto screen a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that would be mine. Would you encourage future players to throw challenges so that their fun uh, things that happen on beach can make the edit? Uh, I will, I'm not going to encourage anyone to throw a challenge. I don't want to ever be cited as a reason, but you know, I think there's a time and place for it. You got to be very strategic if you're going to throw a challenge. Like if you're holding an idol that uh, expires in a day, maybe throw a challenge. But otherwise, probably not. What if I did something really entertaining around camp and I wanted to make sure that people saw it? But then it would be, then it's okay. Yeah, okay. no, if you, yeah. I mean, if, yeah, if you really want to get that screen time up, just throw a challenge. You know? I feel like we're getting, I feel like a, a lot of, have, of really good ideas have come from this interview. Feel lie in good. the game. Uh, sound effect uh, association and now this. Yep. So I, I think this is required viewing. I do have bad news for you. Uh, you were never going to win Survivor. Uh, you were my winner pick. 
and that's oh, no. just, that's just the, that's the strongest curse there is. So I apologize. Well, I, apologize. I certainly appreciate your loyalty. I do appreciate your loyalty. So I didn't know. How would yeah. have I known? That's on me. That's on me. So Kane, uh, thank you so much for your time. I know you got a real busy day, uh, but uh, it was great watching you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thanks for talking to me.